I got the rest of the amp boards put together and here I'm installing them on the heat sink. I'm working on the say left side of the amplifier first and of course before I put the amp boards in I tested each one to make sure that it was working properly. With the heatsink screwed in place, I can get the power turned on to make sure all of the boards are working. And the way to tell is by looking at the green LEDs. Then I had to do the same thing over again, except this time on the right side. What I have here is a piece of scrap aluminum. This is actually from a window you'll find in a commercial building. And I'm going to use that to make a shelf on each side. And this will give me a place to mount the crossover boards. Now what I'm doing here turned out to be a mistake. I had this idea that I could cut tabs and bend them down and those tabs would support the flying end of the amp boards and I wouldn't have to make brackets or anything there. But the aluminum turned out to be a little bit too brittle and the tabs broke off when I bent them. So what I wound up doing was just cutting them out all together and making separate brackets that bolt onto the board and then bolt up to the shelf. Fuck! <laughs> It would have been nice to get all of the holes drilled before I started the assembly. But of course I'm building this on the fly and have to drill holes. And that means making very sure that none of the cuttings are left inside the amplifier when I switch it on. So here's the bracket that I made to support the end of the board. Bolts onto the corner of the board and also up to the shelf. And then I got one of the crossover boards finished and put it in just so that I could power it up and see how much of a turn on thump it creates. And as it turns out, there is one. So to solve that, I spent another full day designing and building a couple of relay boards that will cut these crossover boards out until the power supply fully energizes and then it switches them in so that the noise that they make while they're starting up won't get to the amplifier. I also made a pair of power distribution rails that will fasten right to the top of the heatsink 
And once again, this is a way to avoid having wires running all over the place. Here's a bit of an interesting feature. I decided to use a pair of aluminum tubes to run the input wires through to act as a shield to keep them from picking up noise. And then with all that hooked up, I can put the temporary power switch in the front panel and get that screwed on the front of the amp. Even though the amplifier is not finished, it's finished enough so that I can use it. So I brought it down to my listening room and I set it up. And I actually talked about that in another recent video. Now before I go, I thought I would show this. This first one is the predicted response of the crossover boards. I simulated each one of the crossovers in microcap, and then I put them all on one plot, so you can see all four. And then as I was building the actual crossovers themselves, I would measure the response of each one, and that's the second plot that you're seeing here. And when I put them side by side, you can see how accurate the actual crossovers are.